oral chelation action that helps promote cardiovascular health. So to learn more, go to angioprim.com. That's A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M.com. Or talk to a trained consultant. Call Angioprim toll-free at 877-882-7221. You'll feel better with more energy. Call 877-882-7221. Or go to the website, angioprim.com. Okay, nurse, let's get this man to the ER, stat. Right away, doctor. We see this every day. Heart attack or angina pain due to blocked and clogged arteries. Chelation can remove obstructions or blockages from arteries and help avoid painful and expensive surgery. Now there's Angioprim. It's a liquid oral chelation product that you take with juice. You start to feel the results fast. Angioprim increases blood flow all over the body, and that means more energy and strength to take on the day with less aches and pains. 60 years of research has gone into chelation. And Angioprim is the result, a safe and easy way to unblock your veins and arteries from buildup that slow circulation. Paging Dr. Jones, please report to the emergency room right away. Log on now for a special radio offer from Angioprim. That's angioprim.com slash radio, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com slash radio, or call 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. For several years, KCAA has been marketing the Longevity brand of nutritional and personal care products. Our experience with Longevity has been 100% positive, so we are pleased to recommend them to you. Regarding nutritional supplements, we recommend Pollen Burst in the berry flavor and Tangy Tangerine 2.0 in the tablet form. For regularity issues, we recommend 3-Day Cleanse, and for personal care, we recommend Morning Hydration Cream. You can shop online for Longevity at www.kcaateam.com or you can order by phone by calling 800-982-3197 and tell customer support that you are part of the KCAA team. Longevity is an American company based in San Diego. Call Longevity at 800-982-3197 and ask about monthly auto ship that allows you to buy Longevity products at wholesale prices. That number again, 800-982-3197. If you're looking for a full or part-time sales position and you have radio, TV, or print media experience, KCAA has a great opportunity waiting for you that pays the highest commissions in the market. KCAA is the only station in the IE that broadcasts on three frequencies, so advertisers receive three ads for one low rate. This makes KCAA a must-buy for every local business. If you're interested in a sales position with us, call 909-885-8502 or email CEO at kcaaradio.com. This is KCAA. Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. Promise you joy in the mystery. Dr. Marissa, also known as the Asian Oprah. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, laugh, love, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Perry. And welcome you are tuned into my weekly talk radio show called Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get Balance with Dr. Marissa every Tuesday at naturally high noon here in Hollywood, California, out of the Sunset Gower Studios, where Scandal Newsroom and Heroes is shot. Um, but there's no scandal on this show. And then every Thursday at 7, Saturday at 1 on my syndicated CNBC and NBC Radio News Channel, KCAA AM 1050 FM 102.3, FM 106.5, and now everywhere where iHeartRadio is. And this is a show about hope and happiness and no scandals, so there's no gossip and no K-words, no Kardashian talk at all. Instead, I want you to focus on your own reality show and how you can be happy. 88% of the time. And if you missed my f really incredible guest last week, uh, we did have Corey Feldman and his wife Courtney here, and it is now on YouTube, so you can see that uh, great interview that uh, it went everywhere. <laughs> so uh, please do tune in there, and I just wanted to take a minute as well to thank my on-the-air team at both of my stations 
today because not only have I broken the 92,000 view mark on YouTube, I've also been on the air splattering hope and happiness today for 268 consecutive weeks. Unbelievable. So time is flying. I am having fun. And so Shia Shia, which is Mandarin for thank you, to Jarvis, Tony, Fred, Mark, Mike, Carlos, and Joy. Joe, <laughs> yep, I've got a lot of men holding me up on the air and in the air. Thank you so much. Shout out, excellent customer service encounters, starting with my favorite guy on the lot, and that is Jackson at the Sunset Gower Studios. He just told me and Tony that we were his favorite people on the lot. I hope nobody on the lot is listening, but uh, I wanted to give him some love. He's been great at the years I've been here. He's always here with a smile. Also to Nicole at Diamond Resorts, Felicia at the Mac counter, and Alan Roy, the house manager at Jazz Kitchen in Disney downtown. Thank you so much for taking care of me this last weekend. And I put another drop in my bucket list. Thanks to Agape's 24th annual Sacred Service Saturday event, I got to volunteer and put love in action at the Habitat for Humanity Restore, the Restore in Torrance. A shout out to all of my teammates, David Silverstein and Angie, for their love, sweat, and tears coordinating the 40 plus sites as far away as India and all over the U.S. And my cool bosses at the Restore, Ryan, Desmond, and Greg. And to all of my new balanced Tai Chi Gong students who said that my class was the perfect way to end Sacred Service Saturday. I do love my life. And now for today's show. Dr. Emily Latran is a great example of waking up to the American dream. Coming to the States as a refugee from a war-torn Vietnam and working her way through dental school and is now a high-performance coach, helping business owners and entrepreneurs maximize their potential to streamline business, increase profits, and win back time from work for their family. She's been featured on NBC, ABC, and Fox News, the featured success story on Dental Town Magazine and Global Woman Magazine. Dr. Latran owns two multi-specialty group practices, is the author of a book from refugee to renaissance woman and speaks about high performance and business growth strategies. She is most proud as the mother of three wonderful children. Please welcome to the studio, Dr. Emily Latrell. <laughs> welcome. Thank you, Dr. Marisa. Uh, I am so honored to be here, and I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to all your listeners. Absolutely, and they are happy to have you here as well. So let's start at the beginning. Okay. You were born in Vietnam, and uh, and and tell me, go from there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I was born in Vietnam in the late 60s, right, during the Vietnam War. So, um, you know, I grew up with a warm family, my mom, dad three other siblings, and when I was eight, um, my mother passed away due to cancer. Mm, I'm sorry. And, yeah, and, um, you know, growing up, what I saw on TV were those images of war, mm. um, you know, bombings, there's dead bodies, there are people fleeing villages. So um, that's what I remember about the war. Okay. I wasn't exactly in the war. I was in Saigon. So um, I was pretty sheltered until, of course, the last day when Saigon fell. Yeah. And when the communists came over, um, that those beginning some dark days. Yeah. Um, How old were you? Uh, when they took over, I was um, eight, year eight years old. Yeah, eight, eight years, years old. old. So yeah. that was the same year your mom died. I think my mom so died a little bit after a that. A little bit after that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so you were, how many siblings do you have? I have uh, two brothers and one sister. Okay. And you're the oldest? Is I'm the second, second, uh, okay, second, so but the, the oldest sister. Oldest sister. Okay. Yes. So, so you saw it. I mean, y you heard it on the radio, or how did you know about the whole Saigon falling? Oh, I I lived through that day. I remember. Where were you? Know, you? The, I I was at home. Okay. Um, there were you know the sky was red mm. with I guess all the artilleries and everything, and the next day when you go out to the street, you could see uniforms. Mm. Um, of the soldiers that, Died. you know, they, they took off their uniforms because the communists were taking over. And oh. that that's what I remember very vividly. Right. 
and um, they were forced to take them off, or they were afraid. I think they were afraid. Okay. Yes. So they took their uniforms yes, off and, yes. and just ran. Yes. Okay. Yes. They didn't want to be part of Target. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember my brother coming home with some with some bullet casings, and my dad said, you know, throw them away. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. Th these are things that you don't you don't realize because you're small, right. and uh, not until later when I grow up, when I'm in this country, that I'm studying about the war. Mm. And that I would understand, actually understand it more. Right, right. Yes. So what did your father say at that point? Well, you know, he, both of my parents were philosophy teachers. Ah. So he was pretty content. He, <laughs> he, okay, he, he no was, panic. Right. He no panic. He, he actually was panicking, but he figured he's, he's a teacher, and, you know, how he bad could be it okay. be, right? right? Yeah. Um, little. But little did he know that life really changed mm. because he couldn't even teach philosophy anymore. Um, there's only Marxism and Leninism in a communist country. Right. So he became a history teacher. Uh, and um, so he taught history. Um, we move in and live with my aunts. There were two of his younger sisters who both have children. So we always were living in an, an extended family. Okay. Okay. No choice there. No choice Did there. They took, they took your home? Um, no, we, we, we kept our home. Okay. Yes. So but you, you went for safety's sake or to, to live with your aunt? Um, no, we were all living there together. Okay. Uh, in the same, oh, in the in same the home. Same. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. My um, mother's cousin was a doctor, and when the communists came to China to their town, he was, because he was a doctor and there was disdain, he was made to clean the public bathrooms and wear a dunce hat and walk through the be paraded through the streets and he uh, committed suicide because he couldn't take the humiliation oh, so I'm sorry so to hear that yeah like I mean the thing is is that we really don't th think about this stuff and how traumatic right. and and so what was interesting is knowing that you actually went through that right and had you know it wasn't like oh we want to come to America because you know it's a, a nice place to be it's from a war-torn place that you came from so yes. it's, it's a, it kind of gives a little bit a wider perspective than uh, saying that it's too bad that it's no sun is out today, right? Right, right. And then yeah. when you live in a communist country, because your your shelter, every, a lot of things are censored. You can't really see Say. the outside world. Mm -hmm. You don't know. When I came here, I remember when I was in um, tenth grade reading the book 1984. Uh, it was actually the year 1984, wow. and I actually could totally understood mm -hmm. everything that was described there because mm -hmm. it, it was that you know Orwell's envision of a communist society which right. is big brother and everything and that's exactly what we had what you had there yes. so how long did you stay there um, after the regime came? well I left in 1981 so uh, they came in 1975 so about six years okay so how old were you then when I left I was 13 years 13. old so 8 to 13 you were in that in that space yes and if you're tuned in and you're wondering who I am uh, privileged to speak to today uh, her name is Dr. Emily Latran and she is talking first count of her experience growing up in Vietnam uh, being taken over by the communists and then leaving for America. So, uh, where? So you? So whose idea was it to come, and how did that happen? Well, you know, in 1981, Vietnam was going to go to war with China in the north and Cambodia in the west. Right. And so a lot of the young men were leaving because they're going to be drafted to go to serve in the war. Okay. So um, my aunt decided to leave the country. Um, she was a pharmacist. There were some political things going on at mm -hmm, work. Mm -hmm. And so when she decided to leave, she took a total of six kids with her. Wow. Um, her two children, me and my older brother, and two other cousins. Um, all the guys, you know, it's because they're going to be drafted. Right. And um, I'm a girl. I wasn't going to be drafted. Right. But my dad told me, you're the oldest one in the family. Mm. You need to go help your aunt. Uh, and so that's, that's that why I went. That hard. Picking which kids and who got left and who went, right? Because it it costs money. Yeah. To you have to pay your way to try to escape. So we didn't have enough money for the whole family to okay. go. Yeah. So it was my oldest brother. He was fourteen, uh -huh. and then my uh, my other two older cousins they fifteen and sixteen, uh -huh. and then me I was thirteen, mm -hmm. and then the other two cousins are even younger. Right. And so right. we left in the in the 
middle of the night, mm. crawling into a boat. Mm. Um, about 60 people crammed together like sardines mm. in a 50-feet boat mm -hmm. and basically escaping from the country. Wow. Do you have do you dreams or nightmares, or do you remember this stuff? Was it a, you know... You know, I, I actually remember it very well. I Luckily, I don't have any nightmare. Okay, good. And um, I actually describe that in my book fairly well. Right, what right. I, I think I was lucky because when I left, I was young enough not to worry. Right. So it was, okay, we have to leave Dad. We'll see him again. Um, at least I have my aunt, and we're going to be on this boat, and we're going somewhere. Mm. But it wasn't, it wasn't so much afraid of, you know, the unknown future. Right. Because when you're young, you just don't think that far. Right, <laughs> right, right. You don't have the fear. Future events already ruined. Right, Yeah, right. yeah. So, okay, so then you're in the boat, crammed together, 60 people, and you became one of the, what we call the boat people, right? Yes. Uh, uh, refugees to America. Yes. And then they settled you where? Um, we were on the boat for seven days. We were actually got caught and then robbed and then released by the, the Vietnamese Coast Guard. Wow. Um, and then once um, they basically went on board, they were actually shooting at the boat. Um, and then they went on, they, they took your belongings. Wow. Well, you know, money. Right, right. You're not going to need Vietnamese money, <laughs> right? Right. Um, once you leave. And then we were on the ocean for another five days, and we got to Malaysia. We got to Malaysia. We were, um, they took us to a, um, to a refugee camp. It was called Pulau Bidong. Mm. And um, we just live in makeshift shelter, limited food, water, electricity. My two main activities were studying English and um, just swimming. <laughs> there, was, there was nothing else. It's an wow, island. You're wow. surrounded by water. Yeah, yeah. Wow, and you're still pretty optimistic at this point? Yes, the, the, only, the only thing I remember, um, you know, because we were, we were just enjoying our life with whatever little we right, had. Right, right, we were eight. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, it just, you know, going, going to the ocean and looking that way and knowing the families over there. Wow. And then, oh, are you, uh, are you having some memories right now? <laughs> and then um, we were there for about three and a half months. Yeah. And basically when you're in the refugee camp, you're going to be interviewed mm. from different countries. And you may be taken in by any countries. That's why now you see the Vietnamese, you know, there are people in Australia, let's, there are people in France. Let's take a breath for a second. I see some emotion and I, I just want to, <laughs> I just want to honor that emotion. I think it's beautiful. What's Thank coming you. up? What's coming up? Just like reliving the um, tears of the disinfected that keep our hearts soft. And I am just really, really incredibly impressed with what you've had to go through mm -hmm. and what you did. And uh, it's, it's amazing, the resilience of you. And, and I know that your son's here, and I know that he's so appreciative of what you went through mm -hmm. to give him a better life. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's wonderful that um, you're here. And it's, uh, you know, we take for granted, honestly. We take, we take so much for granted. And we're getting a firsthand experience of someone who, you know, went through a lot to get here. <laughs> So, beautiful, beautiful, yeah. So then we are in, um, so we're at the camps, swimming, <laughs> and getting to, and learning English. Your English is fabulous, by, by the way. That's, that's really impressive. Thank you. And then, um, so then you got interviewed? Yeah, we, um, we got interviewed, and we got accepted to go to the United States. That's Great. So there, so so pe all kinds of countries were were interviewing to see who was taking. Yes, there were okay. different countries um, there. The, um, the United Nation, um, UNHCR, were basically okay. running the camp. Okay. And so there are different countries that come in. You get interview, and if you get accepted, then that's the country you go to. Okay. Okay. Were yeah. you were you hoping 
for the states or at that point you're probably too young was your was your aunt um, hoping or yes my my aunt was hoping for that because we have a cousin who had left in 1975 he served okay. in the military oh. so he left in the states be, yes he left um before okay the war ended okay okay so you wanted to be reunited there yes yeah. so that's the the one person that we knew right in right the US. right right yeah great so then you land in the u.s yes <laughs> west coast Actually, we um, we were first settled in Louisiana, oh. in New Orleans, Louisiana, wow. because that's where my cousin lived. Oh, okay. So we, okay. Were, we were there for six months, okay. and then we moved to California. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So you got a little bit of beignet before you came over. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. And then because the show isn't like too long, and I want to get to uh, your business, so you got here, fast forward for me, you went to school, you did very well. Yes. yes, yes. Fast forward, there were many nights of um, translating English to Vietnamese mm. to understand the language. Yeah. Um, sometimes I used to go to school and I didn't really understand what were being said. Uh -huh. You just kind of sit there and you look around. Right. You just wait until you get home so you can look up all the words. Wow. Um, then a lot, of, a lot of studying, a lot of training, a lot of determination mm -hmm. because... I know it can only get better. <laughs> you know, you didn't understand yeah. anything. Yeah. At Did some you, point, you will. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you ever feel sorry for yourself? Like, why am I, why do I have to? Or were you, what, what kept you? What no, were the thoughts? The thought is, I got to live up to what my dad wanted. Yeah, you you wanted to make him proud. Yeah, yeah. Is he still alive? Um, no, he passed away. He passed. I'm sorry. Yeah, I actually never saw him again. Ah, oh. that's tough. Yeah. Yeah, but you talked to him, or no? No, you didn't. You didn't. What no, happened? He, he he passed away. Um, when we still have the um, the embargo between the two countries, okay, so there was no way the, to communicate. Yeah, to communicate. Yeah. We we yeah. wrote letters. Okay, okay. And when he passed away, I got a telegram. Mm. Well, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he's with my dad, and they're on the other side, and they're probably playing mahjong or something. And he is so proud of you. So proud of you of what you've done with your life and how you, gosh, little girl had to grow up really super fast. Yeah. So I yeah. know that. I, 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 feel, I feel the presence of love in here. So good for you. And Thank then you, you became a dentist. <laughs> 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 Not easy, right? Uh, yeah. And then a very good dentist. I saw some of your reviews online. And then that's not good enough. You're a bit of an overachiever, I can tell. <laughs> I can tell because uh, I resemble that remark too. And then tell me what made you want to become a business coach? Well, you know, what I see is there are, you know, since I've taken the time to really invest in myself, to go to conferences, to study, um, to run the business the most ideal way as I learn from other mentors and mm -hmm. trailblazers, yeah. um, I wanted to share that knowledge. I don't want... I don't want a lot of the other business owners to try to figure out themselves mm -hmm. if if there's a, a way to shortcut it, right? Um, to share that knowledge, yeah. that's what I chose to do. And yeah. you know, honestly, I just need to plan what to do with my life after all these little people leave the home. So yeah, <laughs> it, it's a little part of my you know empty nest. I'm gonna I'm gonna right yeah deal right, with that right right. Yes. So so then so you get here, you go to school. You uh, get your dental degree. You got married. Yes. Yes. Still married. Yes. Okay. And uh, you met him where? Um, he's actually a friend of my older brother. So oh, okay. um, he's uh, he graduated before my dental school at UCLA. Okay. So you met him. At, is he a Vietnamese as well? Yes. Okay. All right. And then you have not one, not two, but three children. Yes. <laughs> and uh, ages. Um, 
Jennifer just turned 21. Alan's going to be 17, and Austin just turned 15 a couple okay. weeks ago. That's that's great. And Austin's here taping peace in, peace out <laughs> in the <laughs> studio. That's wonderful that he got to come. I think school's out, right? Yes, yeah, school's yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, great. So what would you say, um, what, besides your dad and wanting to honor, what what would you say are the qualities that, that this situation and what you went through, because I'm a huge believer that no matter what happens in life, it's uh, good, bad, great, sad. They, they help us develop quality skills and abilities that, um, that make us who we are. So this whole journey of yours, what would you say developed in you as a result of that? Well, I think that it has made me a person who always appreciate mm. and have gratitude for everything you have. Absolutely. Um, because I, I do believe in myself sort of creating my own opportunity sometimes, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, showing up where I can be of service. Yeah. Um, but, you know, having the gratitude and the appreciation is what really take me far. Um, because I, you know, you remember the people who help you. Mm. Uh, you remember the relationships that were that were made. Um, you remember paying back in a way, right? right? And right. then pay forward, mm -hmm. um, keeping your life like that. And then the other thing I that I learned is I am responsible for my own joy. Wow. That I need to mm -hmm. bring joy to my life. I I'm the one bringing joy to the party. I'm the one bringing joy to work. Um, bringing joy to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, you are. And, and tears. <laughs> no, tears but, are the disinfectant that keep our hearts soft. And it's yes. always a compliment to me. I know my friends think I'm crazy, but I love it when people cry because then I know that I'm seeing their heart and right. that I am, I am uh, uh, connecting right. with their heart. So, right. Right. so that's a good and, thing. And so I think that those are, the, those are the things, you know, gratitude, appreciation, and bringing joy. Mm, that has that has been brought forth because yes. of what you went through exactly as it was. And so I think um, if I were to take a life lesson out of this, uh, whatever happens to us, if we can get to a place of what, you know, what is that bringing forth in mm -hmm. us that is beautiful and that makes us feel good, that is then we then we've mastered whatever it was. Yes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> good, good. So, all right. So now you want to give back. You want to help people so they don't have to start at the beginning. Did this come out of, I've always been curious, in dental school, in medical school, in all of the, even, you know, my PhD, we don't talk about how in, in school we learn the content, but not necessarily the process of how to make what you know into a business. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm guessing that in dental school, that's kind of the same way, right? There's not really a, you know, you know, this is what you do for the teeth. Now, what is it that you do for your business? Right. Um, I, I, my understanding is there's no time. Yeah. Um, I remember taking maybe one or two classes, just touching very little on practice management. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I've been very blessed because when I came out, I was working for different offices, so I, I kind of pick up different things. Yeah. Um, and then I started reading some journals, I read some books, and then I read the references in the books, and then I go and read some more books. Mm -hmm. And then that <laughs> led me to going to seminars and learning from VHS, VHS tapes. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I pick up those ideas fairly quickly. 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 And um, it's, a, it's a great blessing because it's, it's not really self-taught. It just we really always be looking out for information mm -hmm. from you know from leaders, from mentors, so that way I can just shortcut my way to success. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Continuous learning or the desire for continuous learning, I think, is one of the key uh, the keys to success. And if we right. think that we're, we've stopped learning once we finish our formal education, no matter how far you go. Uh, then you're losing out, right? Because right, right. it, it's a continuous. So it, it looks like you, you grabbed that by the cojones <laughs> and you went with that. And uh, I tell grad students, all, that, all my grad students, I tell them, 
you know, go to conferences, go meet people. I still have people that I met when I was a grad student who, right. you know, have, have supported and followed uh, my, my path. So, right. so that's what you did. Yes, that's what and, I did. And in fact, uh, you found me because I am into continuous learning. Those of you who already know, I'm uh, going to be new faculty at the CEO Space International, which is pretty much the university for entrepreneurs, right? Right. And you're part of that, and you graduated from there, and that's yes. how we met, yes. right? Yes. Right. Yes. So, so, so you would say continuous learning is something that everybody who wants to be successful is to continue to learn from other people. Yes, right. so I, I look at that as an investment. Mm. Um, it's an investment in myself. You know, I when I when I have my seminars, I talk about investment, and people think I'm going to be talking about stocks and right. real, real, real estate. Right. But I talk about investing in yourself. Um, you know, going to conferences, have a coach, have a mentor, investing in your business. Right. You don't need a big house. Mm -hmm. you, you want a great business. Right. Because that's what's generating the income, allowing you to have your big house but right you don't, you don't need to start with a big house first right and investing in your team uh, the people who support you or just either your employees or even your team of experts it could be your CPA your attorney whoever work with you to help you run that business mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, that's how I look at that because I certainly did not accomplish everything by myself right there's a lot of other people teaching me and helping me along the way yeah so investment would be your first step to success. I would say that's a the quick 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 start step. <laughs> <laughs> quick start step. Investing in yourself investing and investing in, yourself. in the people around you. Yes. Yeah, with time, yes. right? Yes. Time and attention. Yes. Some money too. Right. It could be yeah. your, your investment could be your time, it could be your resource, mm -hmm. it could be your effort. Yep. Yes. Great, great. And I'm just getting the signal now. It is time to go to our sponsor spot to thank uh, all those who make this show possible. So we will be back in two and two. Peace in and peace out. Are you prepared for your opportunities? Are you primed for your big break? Success coach Dr. Emily Latran can help you gain clarity about your unique abilities and how to remove roadblocks to your highest performance self. To be the best that you can be, go to www.dremilyletran.com. That's D R M L E L E T R A N.com and sign up to start your success partnership today. Want delicious Vietnamese Asian fusion cuisine that is so good for your health you won't believe your taste buds? Olac is a 100% plant-based vegan restaurant founded by Mai on living foods and a love for animals that won't make you sacrifice taste for health. Two locations to delight you, downtown LA and Fountain Valley. So go to www.olac.com, A-U-L-A-C, to book your reservation today. Saving the planet has never tasted so good. And we are back. You are tuned into my weekly talk radio show called Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa every Tuesday at naturally high noon out of the Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood, California with Universal Broadcasting Network, Radio TV. And then every Thursday on my syndicated CNBC News Radio channel, KCAA, AM 1050, FM 102.3, FM 106.5, and syndicated everywhere on iHeartRadio. And this is a show about hope and happiness. And today's guest is certainly hope and happiness per, um, personified coming from literally a war ravaged Vietnam, literally being one of those 60 people crowded in um, a boat and robbed and then having to wait to see where her future is and never seeing her father again, who did uh, send her with uh, love and faith and, and uh, an opportunity to come to the American dream, the United States, not only gets a dental degree, not only has uh, three beautiful children that she raised but now is a, a performance coach helping you help yourself with all the things that she's learned on her own firsthand. And so we've been going through some of the the uh, uh, 
examples and also the tips on how to be more successful. And you can also invest in Dr. Emily because she has events that are coming up where you can learn about these things. You don't have to learn them on your own. And uh, tell me where you're doing your events. Well, my event um, is coming up, and I'm really excited about it. Yeah. Um, this is the third time I'm having this event, and I have uh, myself as the, one of the presenter and uh, a couple of other very well-known thought leaders. Bernie Dorman is one of them. Ah. Uh, Forbes Riley is another one. Great. Uh, Bill Sterley. And uh, it's a two-day event. The first day, we will talk about high performance, all the pillars of high performance that include clarity, mm -hmm. energy, productivity, courage, and influence. Mm. And then on the second day, it's all about business marketing. We actually are gonna have a panel with some Google um, experts talking about marketing, and we'll talk about trust, which is basically how you sell, mm -hmm. right? Or how you mm -hmm. present. Yep. And um, you know, I'm gonna be talking about appreciation, all the great mm. things that I do to run my practice for the past 24 years, all the nice things I do for my clients, yep. and which I'm applying it to my coaching business, and I'm sharing all those tips to other people. It's mm -hmm. going to be in Costa Mesa, the Crown Plaza, Costa Mesa. Okay. When? July 15, 16. Okay. From 9 to 6 each day, and uh, people can go to that, the same website, okay. DrEmilyLetran.com. Dr. You're going to see a flyer on there. If you click on that, it will take you to that page. Beautiful. It explains everything. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I'll have to stop by because I have Bernie's award that I picked up for him in India. Oh, okay. <laughs> we both got the, well, he didn't get Iconic Woman of the Year. Oh, I got okay. that you award. Got that one, okay. <laughs> but I picked up his, so I'll have to drop his off. Yes, yeah, so it'll, be, it'll uh, be there on Saturday. At, on Saturday, okay. I'll have yeah. to remember that. And uh, if, if I'm not um, speaking somewhere, I'll try to stop by and say hello as well. That would be great. Yeah, yeah, because I, I actually know Forbes as well. Um, we have um, a, a manager in common, Ali May. Okay. So, yeah, small world. Very, I had very, very no idea. World. Yeah. Yes. So let's go back to some of your uh, your wisdom and your tips. So you talked about influence. So appreciation is the one you you started. Investment, right? Yes. What do you mean by influence? How how do people? Isn't that manipulation? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, for me, having influence is being a role model. Okay. So well, I, I would start there. Mm -hmm. uh, I would invite you to ask yourself, what would you want to see in a role model? Mm. Who's a role model to you? And then you can write down those characteristics and you start living those characteristics. Mm -hmm. You start living like your role model. Okay. And when you do that, you just level up your game, your mm -hmm. performance, your life, mm -hmm. and you become an influence to other people around you. When I'm talking about influence in a workplace, like let's say to my team, uh, being influential meaning I'm guiding yep. them, um, I'm teaching them, I hold them accountable, mm -hmm. I hold myself accountable. Mm -hmm. Being influential in the community means giving back. Okay. Um, because when you give back, you have that kind of name. When you talk, people listen. Okay. So it's almost, it almost sounds like an emotional bank account, making the deposits in the emotional bank account that, uh, who does that? Is it Peter Senge? No. I mean, you know, it, it's social capital. It, that's what it is. Yes. 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 And, and that's, that's how I encourage people. Covey. Show, Stephen yeah, Covey. And, and show people how to have that kind of influence. Right. It's not about... I'm the boss. I have the position. Okay. I make more money than you. That not right. not that kind if, of. Do influence. you want to work here? Yeah. If you right. want to work here, do what I say. Right. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a. It's not. It's informal influence, really. It's like right. a. Right. Right. Something to aspire to. Right. Now, what if you have someone on your team that just doesn't get along with anyone? I don't know if you've ever had that. I have clients all the time. There always seems to be that one person doesn't get along with people. You know, you try to motivate them. Nothing's good enough. You even give them money and that's not good enough. What do you do with people like that? Well, you know, first of all, you have to have clarity in what you want. Okay. And then you find out from that person what he or she wants. So let's say it's a she. Well, find out what she wants. What is her goal mm -hmm. while she's working with you or cooperating with you? 
or and, not cooperating, or, or not cooperating, <laughs> <laughs> and and you know also your your values, your beliefs, mm -hmm. uh, because let's say if my value is to be a contributor to to the society, you know, to community, right. and if you're my partner and you are about money, we we might not work along, right? Uh, you know, very well. Right. So the values, which is part of the clarity, come comes into place, mm -hmm. and if you know, she can't really agree with you on what you want to do. If she doesn't want to go where you want to go, then sometimes you have to give her the opportunity to work somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's not personal. In, in It's not personality. It's the clarity around common goals. And also the system. So if you if I have a systems of business, these are the steps that I want you to take. Mm -hmm. And if you can't follow the steps. Mm -hmm. um, I would sit you down and invite you to tell me why you can't, you know, you can't do step three mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. you just can't do number five or whatever step it is. And I would, you know, I, I would ask you why you can't do certain things. Mm -hmm. You give me the answer. I give you recommendation. If we keep having that same conversation, then we probably are not meant to work together. together. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. So, so it's not a... A hundred. It's not when you have a team. It isn't always going to work out with the match. Is what you're saying, right? And and but then what you want to do is you want to play to that person's strength. Okay. So for example, there's a test that I can have my staff take. It's called the Kobe test, and it shows you what is your strength. Um, so for example, I'm a kind of a spontaneous person. Mm -hmm. You know, my my um, my mode of operation is a quick start. So I make quick decision. You know, I move fast. Yeah. And I could be working with you and you're a fact finder, so you ask 20,000 questions. <laughs> <laughs> you want everything listed. It doesn't mean that we can't work together, but if I can understand that's your strength, if I want to ask you to do certain things, I'm gonna give you a list. I'm gonna explain it in steps, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you tell, if you're asking me to do something, you can probably say it in three sentences and then I'll be fine with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I won't get stressed because I'm, you know, that's my mode of operation. Mm -hmm. But if somebody need a lot of details, then and I don't give them enough details, I'm going to stress them out. Right, right. I use the Myers Briggs to do the similar things. Right, right. To see, yeah. you know, where, you, where, why people drive you crazy and right. why people you get along with uh, certain other people. Good, right. good. So, what would you say um, in creating a team? You're the expert. So, if you're looking for people to work with. What's the best way to find a good fit team? Like, do you do it when you first, are there certain questions that you ask people besides the Kobe? Like, let's say you're, 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 you're going out for lunch with someone and you're thinking about working with them as a partner. What are some things that you have found that are non-negotiable? This almost sounds like a romantic partnership. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Uh, what, 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 would, what have you seen works together and doesn't work together? I, I really think that it comes down to um, the clarity, the value system. Mm -hmm. Because if people don't want the same thing as you, they could work with you for many years and then and then they don't want to work anymore. Okay. I, I actually have first-hand experience with that. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I have an office manager that I keep, I keep stepping, stepping up and right. she would step up with me, uh -huh. right? Let's uh -huh. go do this conference, and we're going to go back, and we're going to do this, uh -huh. and then the next conference. Right. And at some point, she got burned out. She said, okay, I don't want to I don't want to go up anymore. Yeah, I'm, I'm I, happy here. I'm, I'm happy here. Yeah. And so when you have somebody like that, it's it's a little hard to try to move up. The, yes. the, yeah, <laughs> the, you're dragging. Yeah, there's a, there's <laughs> a saying that the same people who work with you when you're at Five hundred thousand dollars is not going to be the same one when you're at a million dollar, right? Sometimes you have to bring in somebody else with a different set of eyes mm -hmm. and a diff different goal, and it's great because that particular um, manager was with me for fourteen years. So she was with me when I, when she knew me when I was an associate doctor, mm -hmm. right? And we went all the way into having three offices, but at that particular point, she wasn't interested in going up anymore, right? And so I think in the lo for the long run, it's what do they really want? Okay. Right? So that first discussion to compare 
vision, goal, values yes. is the most important. Yes. And then if things change, it doesn't mean anybody's bad or wrong. It's just that chapter is done. You had 15 good years with her. Right. I'm guessing that you still, you know, have a good relationship with her. And right. it's just a different to uh, a different match. Yes, and sometimes yeah. people move on to something else and they're perfectly happy with that. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes other the outsiders look in and they don't understand why. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the, the rest of it, you know, once you find out that this might be a compatible person in, in, in the sense of values and, and goals, um, the systems, the training, everybody can do it if yeah. they put their mind to it. Right. Unless you have a really weird yeah. or difficult system. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But those parts, you, you can always figure it out and put people into a particular position to complement each other. Right. And so that way you would have a team that, that run together. Right. Great. So if you're listening and you're thinking of starting your own business or you've started your own business and you're in a bit of a plateau or you've hit some barriers, then you'll definitely want to go to the two-day workshop that Dr. Emily Latron is uh, going to be providing in Costa Mesa, July the 15th and 16th at the... Costa Mesa Crown Plaza. Crown Plaza, and go to our website, www.dremilylatran.com. And are you, by any chance, giving away a free ticket, or I'm putting you on the spot with the Asian <laughs> Oprah giveaway here? Okay. Um, what would you like to give? Of course, I actually brought uh, a copy of my book. Perfect. To Renaissance. give to, yeah, okay. from, from Refugee, Refugee to Renaissance Woman. Beautiful. And, you know, you saw her heart in this interview. So if you want to get all the details from that, that would be good. Yes. And um, I actually am giving away a free ebook if they want to go to exceptionalleverage.com okay. forward slash ebook. Okay. They can get an ebook that will share my personal story and also the business strategies that I've been using for the past 24 years. Beautiful. And so that's no limit there. No limit there. All right. And if they want a ticket to go to my event, they can just email me directly. Okay. So I know that they listen to your show and mm -hmm. they heard about it. Mm -hmm. It's uh, coachemilyletran at gmail.com. Coachemilyletran at gmail.com. And the first person to go to the number four, balance.org, and put in Emily. Uh, or Vietnam or anything like that, you'll get the book and uh, I'll have you autograph it and get it to them. Oh, yes? Yes, thank All you. All right, absolutely. So um, what's your, what, what is uh, your biggest wish? What, what's your biggest wish, your, your, your desire, your heart's desire right now? Right now? Uh, yeah. What's your heart's desire? Right now, um, what I want is for our, a lot of people to know my story mm -hmm. as a message that you are unique in your own way, mm -hmm. that you can do anything you want. Mm -hmm. If you be committed, you take the right, the right way, meaning you invest in yourself. You actually put in the effort to learn so you don't just give up halfway. Yeah. And you didn't really... You know, look into all the resources mm -hmm. uh, because I like to to hear people say, "Hey, I'm I'm successful," and I heard that from Emily. Mm, beautiful. Not, yeah, not not an inspiration, but it's really to motivate, move people yeah. to actually. If take I can action. do it, you can do it. But yes. you have to work for it. You, you have, have to. You do have to action. work for it. Yeah, yes. willingness without action is a fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite sayings. Dr. Emily Latran, thank you so much for coming to the studio. I'm giving you the Dr. Marissa's Beneficial Presence on the Planet Award <laughs> because of everything that you have gone through and uh, what was your father's name his name is um, Lim Lim and I know that Lim is just smiling and loving and very proud of what you have done with your life and uh, holding his uh, who he is for all the world to see so thank you very much yes yeah thank you mm. <laughs> all right and we are Towards, at the end of the show, in fact, uh, welcome to the Balance Bar, where I invite you 
to join me in balancing more your life. And it's day 20 on the 21 day fast from complaining with Dr. Marissa. Today's balance tip is from my favorite relationship teacher, Don Miguel Ruiz, who says, if you want a dog, don't buy a cat. Lots of the complaining we do is because we have expectations of people that cannot or will not or are unable to do what we want them to do. So if you know that going in, you have no room to complain. If you want a dog, buy a dog because cats don't bark. And that's today's balance tip on the fast. We are almost finished with round 72. Round 73 starts July 1st. So please do sign up officially on my website, uh, drmarissa.tv, so that if you do do 21 days in a row consecutively without complaining, then you will get a pack of my motivational cards, 52 card pick me up, stacking the deck for life balance with Dr. Marissa. So please do let me know tomorrow if you've been able to do that 21. And please get the app that I had made by teenagers just for you so that you could have a daily uh, way to track your complaints and you get a lot of applause, the same sounding applause that I have on the show when you are able to stop the complaint before it gets out of your mouth. Uh, I also have Don Miguel, had ha, have had Don Miguel on as a guest a couple of times on the show, so you can look for it on my iTunes and YouTube. Uh, let's see, what else do I have here? On the Beach, Balance on the Beach mini workshop coming up July 15th in Venice Beach. Please go to my website to register. Uh, and I'm finally succumbing to all of the requests to have a weekly Chinese yoga class with my Balance Tai Chi Gong. That will be at Rosie's Dog Beach starting July 8th, every Saturday morning at 8 uh, I think I'm, it's either 8.15 or 8.30, so join me there. Like more information, please do contact me, drmarissa.tv. August 1st to 5th, I'll be in Florida with CEO Space International. If you'd like to sign up there, uh, welcome.ceospaceinternational.com forward slash Dr. Marissa. Next week, it is that time of the month. Yep, sexual healing with Dr. Marissa because I am determined to make pleasure a G-rated topic. And I have more CEO Space International guests. My two new favorite people, Adam and Randy Markell, will be my first couple to come on my special series because, you know, it's never too late to pivot in the bedroom. That's uh, Adam's best-selling book. So that's next week on Take My Advice, I'm Not Using It, Get Balance with Dr. Marissa Pay. That's P for positive, E-I. And remember, it's all about balance. Peace in and peace out. and noticing that my body just doesn't work as well as it used to. So I like to keep fit as possible by hitting the gym a few times a week. Recently, I started having a nagging bicep pain, and it got so bad I couldn't even lift the weights. When I was complaining about it to a friend, he told me about Angioprim. He said chelation helps remove toxins, heavy metals, and cholesterol in veins and arteries that may cause blockages. You know, after just one week of taking Angioprim, the pain was gone, and now I'm back in the gym full strength. Scientific research proves the active ingredient in angioprim has superior oral chelation action that helps promote cardiovascular health. So to learn more, go to angioprim.com. That's A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M.com. Or talk to a trained consultant. Call angioprim toll-free at 877-882-7221. You'll feel better with more energy. Call 877-882-7221. Or go to the website, angioprim.com. Okay, nurse, let's get this man to the ER, stat. 
Right away, doctor. We see this every day. Heart attack or angina pain due to blocked and clogged arteries. Chelation can remove obstructions or blockages from arteries and help avoid painful and expensive surgery. Now there's Angioprim. It's a liquid oral chelation product that you take with juice. You